Question 14, Part C, Part 1. Given a non-zero vector p, q, it is known that the vector q, negative p, is perpendicular to p, q, and has the same magnitude. Do not prove this. Points a and b have position vectors oa equals a1, a2, and ob equals b1, b2, respectively. Using the given information, or otherwise, show that the area of triangle OAB is half times the magnitude of A1B2 minus A2B1. We can find the area of triangle OAB using vector projections. Let's consider this diagram. We have vector OA here, which is A1, A2 in component form. We have vector OB here, which is the vector B1, B2 in component form, and this forms the base of the triangle. And I've joined the endpoints of the two vectors here to form the third side of the triangle. And we have vector OC, which is equal in magnitude to vector OB and perpendicular. And because of that, vector OC can be defined as B2 negative B1 in component form. And that comes from the given fact in the question, which is stated here. Now the area of triangle OAB is equal to half times the base times the height, and that equals half times the magnitude of vector OB multiplied by the magnitude of the projection of vector OA onto vector OC. And that's this vector here, from here to the end of the arrow here. And that equals half times the magnitude of vector OB multiplied by the magnitude of the dot product of vectors OA and OC over the magnitude of vector OC. Now the magnitude of vector OC is equal to the magnitude of vector OB. So I can rewrite this equation replacing the denominator here with the magnitude of vector OB. Now the denominator here will cancel with this term here. So we get area of triangle OAB is equal to half times the magnitude of the dot product of vector OA and vector OC which equals half times the magnitude of A1B2 minus A2B1 as required. Part 2. The point P lies on the circle centered at I, R, 0 with radius R greater than 0, such that vector IP makes an angle of T to the horizontal. The point Q lies on the circle centered at J, negative capital R, 0, with radius capital R greater than 0, such that vector JQ makes an angle of 2T to the horizontal. Note that vector OP equals vector OI plus vector IP, and vector OQ equals vector OJ plus vector JQ. Using part 1 or otherwise, find the values of T, where T is greater than or equal to negative pi and less than or equal to pi, that maximise the area of triangle OPQ. The question is asking us to find the value of T that maximises the area of triangle OPQ. That's the triangle that's formed by vectors OP, OQ and PQ. Now the idea is to come up with an expression for the area of that triangle in terms of T and then use calculus to find a value of T that maximises the area of that triangle. Let's consider these two vectors in particular, vector OP and vector OQ. And noting that vector OP is equal to vector OI plus vector IP, and vector OQ is equal to vector OJ plus vector JQ. Before we can come up with an expression for the area of triangle OPQ, we need to express vectors OP and OQ in component form. Now vector OP is equal to vector OI plus vector IP and in component form that's R plus R cos T for the horizontal component and R sine T for the vertical component 
and I've labeled them A1 and A2. Now, vector OQ is equal to vector OJ plus vector JQ, and in component form, that's negative capital R plus capital R cos 2T for the horizontal component and capital R sine 2T for the vertical component, and I've labeled those B1 and B2. And the reason why I've labeled them like this is because we need to use the result from part one to help us come up with an expression for the area of triangle OPQ. Using the result from part one, the area of triangle OPQ is equal to half times the magnitude of A1B2 minus A2B1. So that's equal to half times the magnitude of R plus R cos T in brackets times capital R sine 2T minus R sine T times negative capital R plus capital R cos 2T in brackets. Now we can factorize out R here, so it'll appear outside the brackets here. And we can also factorize out capital R here and here, so it'll appear around here. So the next few steps is cleaning up the algebra and simplifying the expression as much as possible. So that's equal to half times the magnitude of capital R times R times 1 plus cos t in brackets times sine 2t minus capital R times R times sine t times negative 1 plus cos 2t in brackets. Now we can factorize out capital R times R here and here, so it appears outside the absolute value brackets. And at the same time, we can multiply sine 2t to the terms inside the bracket here and here. So the one plus cos t, both multiplied by sine 2t, and we can expand this bracket here in a similar way as well. So multiplying negative one plus cos 2t by sine t. And we end up with half times capital R times R times the magnitude of sine 2t plus sine 2t cos t plus sine t minus sine t cos 2t. Now I'm going to rearrange some of these terms and you'll see why shortly. So I'm going to make this term here, I'm going to move that to the front. I'm going to move next to this term here. I'm going to write this term next to it. And the sine t here and the sine 2t, I'm going to write at the end. So that's equal to half times capital R times R times the magnitude of sine 2t cos t minus sine t cos 2t. Now if we let say capital A equal 2t and capital B equal t, we got sine A cos B minus sine B cos A. And that can be simplified to sine of 2t minus t in brackets. So the difference between the two angles. So the expression becomes half times capital R times R times the magnitude of sine 2t minus t in brackets plus sine 2t plus sine t. And that's equal to half times capital R times R times the magnitude of sine t plus sine 2t plus sine t, which equals half times capital R times R times the magnitude of 2 sine t plus sine 2t. Hence, the area of triangle OPQ is equal to half times capital R times R times the magnitude of 2 sine t plus sine 2t. So I'm going to let f of t equal the expression inside the absolute value brackets. So I'm going to let f of t equal 2 sine t plus sine 2t. So the area of triangle OPQ is equal to half times capital R times R times the magnitude or the absolute value of f of t. Let's differentiate f of t with respect to t. In other words, we're going to find an expression for f dash of t. And that equals 2 cos t plus 2 cos 2t. Factorizing out 2 from here and here, we get f dash of t is equal to 2 outside of 
cos t plus cos 2t in brackets. Now cos 2t, being a double angle, is equal to 2 cos squared t minus 1. So we get f dash of t is equal to 2 outside of 2 cos squared t plus cos t minus 1. Notice that we have a reducible quadratic expression inside the brackets. Note that 2x squared plus x minus 1 is identical to 2x minus 1 in brackets times x plus 1 in brackets when factorised, where x is equal to cos t in this case. So f dash of t is equal to 2 outside of 2 cos t minus 1 in brackets times cos t plus 1 in brackets. Now the next thing to take note of is that f of t is equal to 2 sine t plus sine 2t and this is an odd function. Hence the absolute value or the magnitude of f of t is even. So we only need to consider values of t greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to pi. And whatever result we get there we can replicate that for values of t between negative pi and 0. So we're going to maximise the area of the triangle by maximising the absolute value of f of t. And we're going to do that by solving f dash of t equals 0. So let's go back to the factorised expression for f dash of t, which is here. So we have two cases. Either we have 2 cos t minus 1 is equal to 0 or cos t plus 1 is equal to 0. So 2 cos t minus 1 equals 0. If we solve for t, we get cos t is equal to half. So t is equal to pi over 3. And in the other case, we get cos t plus 1 is equal to 0, which means that cos t is equal to negative 1. And then solving for t, we get t is equal to pi. But if we go back to our original function, the original f of t that is, so that's this function here. If we substitute t equals pi here and here, we end up with f of pi is equal to 0. So t equals pi is not a solution as this will make the area of the triangle 0. Now we need to test the stationary point at t equals pi over 3. And I'm going to use a table for that. So pi over 3 represents our stationary point. And we need to test values on either side of the stationary point. So I'm going to use t equals pi over 4, which is less than pi over 3, and t equals pi over 2, which is greater than pi over 3. So if we go back to our expression for f dash of t, so this expression here, if we substitute the values pi over 4 and pi over 2 into f dash of t. We get f dash of pi over 4 is approximately 1.4, which is a positive gradient. f dash of pi over 3 is 0, so that's a horizontal gradient there, so that's our stationary point. And f dash of pi over 2 is equal to negative 2, which is a negative gradient. So the absolute value of f of t is maximised when t is equal to plus or minus pi over 3, since it is even and symmetrical in the y-axis. Therefore, the area of the triangle is maximised when t is equal to negative pi over 3 or t is equal to pi over 3.